This is the Horse Radio Network. Hey, you're listening to Adulting with Horses, the best place to be if you can't be at the barn. We are your co-hosts and equine authors, Heather Wallace and Natalie keller Reinert. As crazy horse girls, we don't take ourselves too seriously in the saddle or out. We celebrate the things that make us different. Join us as we talk about horses and pop culture and get a little weird in a fun way. Thank you for being a little weird with us. And let's let's get on and talk about my favorite topic. Toxicity. <laughs> um, speaking no, of our parents. So, <laughs> speaking of me, yeah. Speaking of toxic people, let's talk about. Um, well, you know, so in in the equestrian world, just like with any sport, any hobby, any pastime, whatever, there's always some potential drama. But we have some good things. We have some bad things. And I think there's a, a lot of things been popping up lately on social media. Um so I guess this is good for like a pop corner, which is like my toxic trait is or my toxic trait is when it comes to horses. So I thought it'd be really fun to get our clubhouse involved. They're all so toxic. We and love have them. A good laugh. We love you, clubhouse. But you have shown us that you are toxic. <laughs> but the scarier we, thing uh, is for my weird horse girls is how many of these I yeah, actually I gonna, agree with. Yeah, or I do. identify <laughs> with like all of it. So... <laughs> Well, and, and in order to prompt everybody, I kind of, you know, I bared my soul and I admitted <laughs> one out loud, um, which is that my bridles, I probably only clean like once or twice a year. Like I, I'm not really good at cleaning the leather of yeah. my bridles. The bits are a different story. I wipe them off periodically. But What's that about? I'm not super Clean your tack, woman. That. I clean my saddle. I'm more likely to clean my bridle I mean, than my saddle. Well, sometimes. <laughs> But my saddle is a lot more expensive, and I figure like I could just get a new bridle if it doesn't well. Do you well. know what? I have a built-in sort of system from working at the track, right? So when I worked, well, at some we had nylon bridles and we threw those into the washing machine. But the um, if we had leather bridles, then we scrubbed those after every you know after every morning session. Where and whereas the saddles, you just kind of wipe off, right? And a lot of uh, cheap exercise saddles are just kind of laminated anyway. They're not really leather. Um, and right. But yeah, we would scrub our bridles because it was like, if the bridle breaks, <laughs> you're toast. So yeah, I probably fucked. got used to it from, from doing that. And then I used to do it when I worked in the parks department. Um, I don't know if you've ever had a government job. But no. What government would hire well, me? They hired Are you me. Kidding? Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, but you're quite that's crazy. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, quite, <laughs> I'm crazy in the shadows. They, when you have a government <laughs> job, if you finish something early, you don't let anybody know. You make your work fill your time. Uh, and I had, I was told this after I did a day's worth of work in two hours, and <laughs> the sergeant was like, "You need to." change the way you work here and I was like no <laughs> stop being so, so efficient Natalie I You're got making really hardcore bad. about cleaning our tech because <laughs> I had nothing else to do so I would just turn on the radio and just scrub just listen to WNYC and just scrub <laughs> well so you know what I'm really good about is I will go through I have the two tech boxes one for Ferris one for Delight and what I will do is every change of season from summer to fall or like into winter or winter to spring I will go through my tack box reorganize it dump it out clean it and you know put aside things that I haven't used wash things like my tack boxes are phenomenal it's impressive so I guess that's like the priority for me <laughs> the cleanliness of, above all uh, everything yeah, well, and then mm -hmm. I know where everything is. But I will say, I have a Benefab blanket that I bought. It's like an acupressure ceramic blanket that I bought for Ferris two years ago. I have no <laughs> clue where it is. I, I've never even used it because what I can't find it anywhere. I don't know if someone took it. I have no it's idea. It's not one of your daughter's beds. They sleep under it. 
Oh, God. This comes. They steal everything. Do you know how many helmets I have in my tack box? Because, and they keep trying to take my 1K no. helmet. <laughs> no, I, that's what I said. I said, not on my watch. I was like, take the temporary, take the cheap, take the ovation, like take those. I don't want you oh having the 1K. So, anywho, I thought it'd be fun. Well, what is your toxic trait? Because we need to talk about that. Everybody knows I'm not my toxic, toxic trait traits. now. I'm an entire. <laughs> we'll narrow it down to maybe like one. Well, I think the biggest one for me is that the big picture sort of gets lost in small things that overwhelm me. Do you know what I mean? So if I have, let's say I have a show as a goal and it's at a month's time and I want to ride four days a week to prep for that show. But one of those de- weeks I can't ride at all. I will become overwhelmed with the idea that that week off will negate all of the work I would have done before, right? So week one, I get Uh. some good work in. Week two, I don't ride. Week three, well, now I'm back where I started at the beginning of week one. So why do I ride? Why am I doing any of this? What is, what, what am I doing with my life? What, why am I riding horse? I'm going, I'm going to take a nap. And that's, (laughs) Yeah, ah. I talk. I can talk myself out of anything. Oh well, you know I wrote a whole book about that. So. <laughs> I talked myself that's out not, of reading your book because I was me. afraid <laughs> what I would find. <laughs> <laughs> and I really think, off the top of my head, like I have, you know, I have plenty of issues, but I feel like off the top of my head, that's the one that gets in my way the most. Um. Like, I have a lot of interests. I would like to be really good at a lot of different things. I would like to ride side saddle, and I would like to learn mounted archery, and I would like to event again, and I would like to be really good at dressage. And I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that I want to do all of those things. Like, they can all feed one another. Uh, And I certainly would never get bored. My issue is that I just don't pick something make a schedule and go after it. I just talk myself out of it and do something else. Yeah. And so inconsistency kind of breeds lack yeah. of motivation. Yeah. I got yeah. a lot of lack of motivation. I can I relate a lot. to that. The one time this entire year when I felt crazy motivated was when I went down to World Equestrian Center and I watched some dressage. Um, and it was a bunch of people doing like their first, you know, like intermediate tests. And I just, I definitely felt like, Ben and I could do this. We would be really good at this. But I talked myself out of even riding most of the time. (laughs) So, you know, getting really good at intermediate. I do the same Mm -hmm. thing, though. I think a lot of people can relate to that because I think, you know, we get in our heads what our goals are and then it's so overwhelming and then you don't really see the roadblocks to take you there. Um, A couple of years ago, I, I put out a little thing just saying like, make your goals smaller like set a big goal but then focus on the small goals that lead up to it and then just try to focus on the one goal at the time which for you would be like and for me as well would be like ride three days a week like that would be your first goal right like focus that when you get that part of your habit and motivation you get that done then like move on to like okay focus on what type of exercises you're doing those three days and then like start to pare it down where each step is getting you closer to the ultimate bigger goal because your problem is the same as a lot of people's, including mine, is like our ideas are so big and then you get lost right, in the how to get right. there. And everything feels like, and this, you know, comes back to my bad relationship with spending money. As I start thinking about like, what are the financial implications? Like I can't afford to go train with so-and-so, so why am I bothering kind of thing? You know what I mean? Because it's like you're talking yourself yeah, out of it. I'm just telling, I'm basically I'm telling myself it's impossible and I shouldn't bother. That's what I do. I am like, I'm like a mean mother. Which is an excuse because you could do the, you could put your, your earphones in and listen to a, you know, dressage lesson on your, on yeah. your phone. Yeah. It's. So there's definitely things you're that absolutely you can right. Do. Buy the book, yeah. watch the but video, get the subscription. These are all possibilities. It's not anywhere near as pricey as going and finding an upper level rider to yell at me for 45 minutes as fun as that sounds and that sounds way (laughs) less fun anyway like Mm -hmm. no thanks um 
No, I, I agree. I think I think a lot of us are guilty of that. I think that's super relatable, actually. Um, and I, I keep telling my trainer, I said, you know, we're going to get lessons. I'm going to start coming once a week and I'm going to lesson on this horse and we're going to do that. And then it comes time to making an appointment and I don't have any free mm-hmm. time consistently. Right? Because yeah, and it if gets it, filled. If it becomes hard work, and this is a real excuse for me, not like a fake excuse. If it becomes really hard work to the point where I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to fit this in? Then I'm sorry, I can't commit to that kind of stress. I have enough. Well, like, then exactly. it's not fun. And then, and then you really reach a what is the point moment it, where it's not fun. And how many horse husbands and how many parents, you know, have said over the years, babe, are you having fun? <laughs> And, and you crying with your helmet bug. Yes, I'm having so much. But are you? You know, and I think that has to be taken into yeah. account too is your goals can't stress you out because it's still what we do for fun. You know, even if we feel compelled to do it because we've got the horse bug, it still needs to be fun. It's, this isn't... Um. We're not going to the UN every day. <laughs> you know? Well, and, and I, was, I mean, that brings us back to like episode six where we talk about it like your horse doesn't care yep. if they're ridden or not. Some horses need exercise, but that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be physical or has to be ridden. Um, you know, and I think we put so much pressure on ourselves to uphold this standard, right? Because you have to ride X amount of times a day. But like, no offense. It's not about mm-hmm. riding for me. I love to ride. But I love the horsemanship aspect. Right. And I feel the same way. So I think the way, you know, to look at it, you know, for somebody like like me or yourself is to say, you know, my goal is to be a good horsewoman and spend X number of days keeping my horses happy. My, you know, my next goal, my outside external goal would be I would like to ride at this level in a year's time. What do I have to do to work towards that? So that your, you know, your everyday horsemanship goal is your habit that becomes sort of who you are. And then all of the extra stuff, all of the ribbons or, you know, adulation kind of things that comes after you've mastered. I'm going to be with my horse X number of days per week and we're going to play or ride or graze or groom. Wow, look at this breakthroughs yeah breakthroughs all the way we're so smart but well it's hard too. it's hard to put into action but like I feel like a lot of times when we're so hard to ourselves and then we look back like my goal with delight I didn't know if he could ever be ridden again so every time I get on him it's like a right. gift right I realize that it's something that might be fleeting or that might never have happened so I want to make my goal for him actually is very different than Ferris my goal for Delight is I want him to enjoy being ridden. I want him to have fun, right? And for Ferris, my goal is I need him to be muscular and balanced so that he is in better health because he is neurological. Okay. Um, and so they're two very – so Ferris gets ridden more and ridden differently mm-hmm. than Delight. And I find that sometimes when I take the, the onus off myself – which is kind of funny, but I really don't love that kind of attention on myself, then it helps me because I feel like I'm doing right. it for Right. I completely understand that. And can I just say, I like how their names lend themselves to their goals. Like Ferris needs to be strong iron horse and Delight just needs to have fun. <laughs> That's amazing. That's how I'm going to tell them apart. You know, I never yeah, thought yeah, about yeah. that. Iron horse and fun horse. <laughs> yeah. And it, 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 I mean, yeah. Well, and it's nice because I think not having the same goal, it does mean that sometimes Delight doesn't get ridden in favor of Ferris. But Delight's fine with that because Delight's the one that gets to go off property. And he's the one who, again, needs to enjoy himself because he does get arena sour and he gets sore and he gets grouchy. And um, I'm just really glad that I have like, I can have both sides. Yeah. And right. Horses that need two different things. It's cool too that you're... Because you have it, you have the horse's goals narrowed down. You're able to make decisions really easily. I have an hour. Who's getting my attention? That is yes. super helpful. Yeah, yeah. And I will say, Delight is built like a brick shit house. Like he is 
for the, the even though he's not being ridden currently he gets a lot of exercise in the paddock i take him on walks in the woods so he is built beautifully and he doesn't need the physical mm-hmm. exercise right so for him it's more mental where for ferris it's more physical and to you so it is it does make it a little easier good stuff wow i don't think i've ever really realized that like before i know you're so smart i know I'm very smart. You just bring the good things out of me. <laughs> <laughs> now, if they only had clean bridles. <laughs> Although, here's a hack. I did buy a biothane bridle for a delight yeah. for the woods. And like when I take them off property and that you just put that shit in the dishwasher. I don't have a so dishwasher. Winning. I took or mine out. You could dip it in a bucket of a water. Bucket of wa- I don't have a bucket of water. Right. No, I do buckets of water. <laughs> I really hope your horses have a bucket of water. All of my water, it's hand drawn and I give it to my horses. I don't even have water to bathe. Uh, Yeah. Oh my goodness. Are you ready to read some of these toxic traits? Yeah. I'm pretty excited. Let's see what our our lovely little clubhousers are also toxic. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Do you have it pulled up? I do have it pulled up. Do you want to, we could just go down the list here right. and uh, and let's go down and we'll read everybody's first names and we'll just well, read the Carrie's comments. yeah I'll start you with Carrie because she was the first one in under the mark hers is very simple I am absolute garbage oh Carrie no I am absolute garbage at keeping yeah, track so of and organizing my stuff so first of all who organizes but have you lost a benefit blanket. <laughs> Uh, Carrie, less is more. Um, just forget you ever had stuff and uh, just, you know, go forth with bailing twine and a pair of scissors and you'll be fine. That's my advice to you. And and my guess is she's got the stuff she needs and anything extra is yeah, just unnecessary. Yeah, that makes you think, doesn't it? Makes you think. Minimalism. Yeah, I I, don't know, I still want to go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going I'm going I'm going to the NFR soon and uh Thank God I'll be flying oh, home. Oh my just goodness. Say that. Weight limits. All right. So, yeah, weight limits. Exactly. It would be irresponsible of me to pack a second suitcase that's empty, right? Um, It'd be weird. No, that wouldn't be. You could put like two things in it. Be like, <laughs> I need it for my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Lisa's next. And she says, one of them is definitely cleaning my tack. I can't tell you when I last cleaned mine. Another, I guess, would be cleaning my brushes and my brush bucket and area. Okay, it's cleaning all around with horses. I do brush my creatures, but that is the extent of my horse cleaning. Yes, I understand the brush thing. I'll, I'll uh, every once in a while, I'll get the excess dust off, but I don't actually like no, sanitize. No, I'm thinking the brushes. about that. Like, I don't brush, I don't wash brushes anymore. That was something I would do on the clock, right? That was something I did when I was a groom. Only yeah, when you're when paid, paid to do it. I was, you know, doing my day. I was doing my 10 hours in the barn. Okay, time to clean the brushes. But I don't, I don't do it here. I should, I guess. I don't know. They're just kind of sandy. I don't know. Brushes. You yeah. just dropped an earbud. I can barely hear out of my left ear anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Is that why you always put me on your left side so you can't hear me? No, it's mirror <laughs> image, see? So you think that I'm, I'm, I'm pulling out. I don't know which one I pull out. I don't know. I turn them up. I turn them up really loudly, to be honest with you, because I can barely I'm just hear. Teasing her. Uh, now, do you? So she brushes her animals. That's good. That's that's a good start. Yeah. So you know. Yeah, I think that's yeah. fine. You do you. Yeah. Lisa, you're not alone. <laughs> I yeah. I clean. I did clean out um the shed where I I keep hay when I when I occasionally have inside hay as opposed to the compressed hay that stays out in the field. I did clean that out last night, um, but it it had desperately needed done for like a really long time. So I wouldn't say I do it in a timely manner. (laughs) Hey, at least you do it, right? What's time? I I sit out there and do stuff. So it's kind of gross. Miranda. Oh, I get Miranda. Oh my God, Miranda, I get you. I get you. This was me for the first 30 years of my life. I cannot enjoy riding. I cannot simply enjoy riding. I am always striving to be better and do more. Even though I ride a sweet retired boy who just needs some exercise. Don't get me wrong. I love riding, but I've got a competitor's mindset. That was me 
for such a long time, I could not ride for fun. I simply could not. Everything I did was work. And I said to people, I don't understand riding for fun. Riding is hard work and it's about getting better. Uh, And I don't feel that way anymore, but I definitely identify with it. It could be hard. Yeah, I know a couple of people who are ultra competitive and even sometimes going on trail rides, it seems like it's almost a chore to go with them because they just can't mm-hmm. enjoy yes. the moment. And and we were taught that, right? We were taught like your horse is always working. Your horse is either um, on a long loose rein or your horse is on the bit. You know, I feel like a lot of us um, growing up with, you know, well, definitely earlier riders, earlier, you know, 60s, 70s era trainers were very strict. Um, but in the 80s and 90s, you know, we had a, was when, you know, we started getting a lot of books and then um, later on, even like blogs and things like that, where there people were taskmasters. And, you know, if we if you spend a lot of time trying to emulate these big time riders, then there's no room for fun there. And it, you know, for me, it it took like a full reset of my entire life and actually quitting riding to go like, oh, you know what? Maybe I just like brushing horses. <laughs> Maybe I just like watching horses. Yeah. And there's there's nothing wrong with having a competitive no. mindset um, as long as there's balance. Right. Right. As long as you can balance that out with a nice little hack or a little bit of quiet time. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, to, to so I can see why that would be. But at least she recognizes it, Miranda. You recognize it. And it's something... I don't know if you want to work on it, but as, you know, as I, long as the horse gets some you. chill time, it, if, if that's how your brain works, then you just kind of got to wait out your brain. <laughs> and you know, some horses really yeah. love to compete. I mean, let's be honest. You know, uh, to use my own pony as an example, Ferris, who hates, to, you know, he would love to be a paddock pet for the rest of his life. When there's multiple horses on the trail or in the ring. He is mm-hmm. highly competitive. He wants to be the cutest <laughs> thing out there. He wants to be, th- oh my God, he feels so handsome. Um, he used to get really anxious at shows, but I think it was because he was so competitive that he would just mm-hmm. amp himself up. Yeah, yeah. I've had thoroughbreds like that for sure. Where they're just, that's their, that's yeah. th- their whole mindset is more, more, more. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then there's mine. Uh, <laughs> my thoroughbred is like, yeah, eh, I love that really? you could have both with a thoroughbred. <laughs> I know. It really it's is. either or, right? It's very hard yeah. to... Yeah. All right. So moving to the next, Kayla says, send, oh God, sending my husband photos of ponies I want knowing damn well that I only have two stalls, which are full, and getting pouty when he tells me no. Kayla, I so heart you on this because if I wasn't afraid of divorce, I would 100% yeah. do the same thing. However, as we all know, I don't ask. Yeah. I just do. <laughs> So it's really nice that you even – I think you're using him as devil's advocate because if he said yes, you probably would do it. And so you know you need to go through him. This morning, <laughs> I saw somebody in the neighborhood was giving away – well, they had found and needed to place a parakeet. And I would have gone oh. and gotten that parakeet this morning like in my pajamas. I'm like, hell yeah, I'm getting a parakeet for free. <laughs> but – Corey is so not down with more animals right now. <laughs> and he's right because every animal adds to the monthly feed bill, even a bird. Um, but I do the same thing, Kayla. I am like, Corey, look at this mare. And I do it with brood mares because we used to breed and we we <laughs> loved we, we loved breeding. It was wonderful. And we love thoroughbreds. Um, and being involved in the thoroughbred industry was just we loved it. And it was the it was a, something that we did together, um, but he's not willing, obviously, to get involved with it again because that's insanity. And I am not willing to, but probably would, like you say, if he wasn't around to stop me. So I said, right. I'm like, Corey, look at this broodmare. Isn't she gorgeous? She's free, Corey. And he's, you just, he'll look and he'll be like, wow, she's really nice. You're just like I testing totally am. I'm just kind of poking. That's all. <laughs> it's so bad. I don't... I don't even want another horse, not even a little bit. Well, it's funny because even like we're we're 
plotting and planning for this right. barn up in Vermont. And when I told him what kind of um, stalls and access I wanted, I said, you know, I think ultimately I'm going to want a max of four horses, right? Again, because getting back to your um, thoughts about leaving them behind or being separated, you know, there's a chance often I'll be taking one off the property and leaving two behind. So we need at least sure. three, right? But but Ferris and Delight, this is my rationale, Ferris and Delight will be kind of 20 at that point, And my husband will have his mm. own husband horse. So I'm going to need like a trail horse at that time. Right. So four, right? And then that slick little bastard goes, well, we should probably get six stalls just in case. And I said, okay, because I'm not the one that says no. And I know damn well that if we get six stalls, yeah, does he know the stall horses. principle <laughs> that there are always one horse more than there are stalls? Does he understand that? <laughs> he tried to tell me that would be for storage. And I was like, that's adorable. Oh, dear. <laughs> you want storage? You could build yourself a storage shed. You're not putting. Your junk in I'm my saying. barn and my nice horse stalls. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I can relate, Kayla, so much to you because I actually, and even the next one, um, which Natalie, you can read, but because uh, I've already got my eye out for a husband horse for Jason, even though we're like five years out from him. <laughs> we never know when the right horse will strike. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Well, Lisa just went there. Lisa is straight up says, always looking for another pony. Yeah, she's just yeah, she, yeah, guilty. I don't, I I don't think that I, I don't think that I do this. I don't seek out horses, but the act of being on social media brings the horses to me. <laughs> That's correct, and I do. I'll read the whole thing. I'll look oh at the God. videos. I'll look at the prices, and if there's something really good, I mean, I always have that in the back <laughs> of my head, like maybe, um. All right, so Anita says, I'm absolutely guilty of just replacing something that could probably be easily fixed or even just cleaned. Tack, blankets, buckets, et cetera, et cetera. Anita, I think you're my spirit animal because same. <laughs> I'm cracking up at the idea of replacing a dirty bucket. <laughs> well, no, like imagine if the handle breaks or it splits or something Well, I don't know like if you that. could fix that. I don't. No, you can't, but you, you could, you could like duct tape and repurpose uh, that's it probably for something true. Else. I'm just imagining like a bucket with algae in it and you're like nope <laughs> but like look at a blanket like what if like one of the sir singles falls off they oh yeah totally parts what are the odds that you're I'm gonna fixing get that, that with bailing twine and, like... that's do you know how many blankets <laughs> I've tied on I'm not even kidding I believe you but that's not safe either listen the whole concept of bailing twine is that it breaks. That's why you can use it for a breakaway cross tie. I mean, yes, that's, that is correct. <laughs> that is correct. I, I just like Anita and I are obviously different. And so like, uh, yeah, it's fine. Just I'm don't not judge judging us. you. <laughs> I feel judged, but That's just Natalie. my face. I feel judged. That's just my normal face. My, <laughs> Your judgmental my, judge, that's face. That's my normal face. That's how I look. Don't judge my judgmental face. You're making me feel okay. attacked. I, I will stop. We have you. Zoe here. <laughs> Zoe. I get I get it. Every time. It's is, one of my favorite it? names. I love I won't say her last name, but it's very adorable. Every time my green pony makes me feel like I don't know what I'm doing or I feel like I should have a quotation marks real horse, i.e. something 15 hands plus and already finished. I buy her something. Treats, tack, grooming Aww. tools. Yeah. OK, that feels like a. I think that the feels guilt. sweet. I like that. I don't think that. Yeah. Like I think so. um, your pony dumps you and you're like, you know what, pony? You're right. So I bought you. <laughs> here's right. here's a new bag of horse cookies. Sorry that I fell off. I, I think that's fair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think I might be similar to that because every time um, Ben does anything that I don't like. I'm like, I, I guess I need to replace something because it is clearly wrong. <laughs> I never would blame myself. And I think that's Zoe. What you're doing here is you're not you're not blaming yourself. You're saying, horse, maybe you need something else that will make you feel better. Right. Yeah. And listen, give yourself a break. A green pony. That's, you know, that's a lot harder than having a finished yeah. course and the work you're putting in now will come out in the end and you have stuff 
Yeah, yeah. you got lots of stuff, lots of treats. Like, so every time someone misbehaves, I mean, my God, that's that's positive <laughs> reinforcement, right? I just feel like that's a little bit of a guilt trip, but I, yeah. I'm not here for it, right? Like she feels guilty thinking she should get a different horse. Oh, and then she feels bad. Yeah, I, I kind of gift. overlooked that half of it for sure. Like feeling like you should get a different horse. You don't want a different horse. You want to buy this horse stuff because you love this horse. Yes. And it's OK yes. if you don't know what you're doing. None of us know what we're doing. I don't think. Do you know what you're doing, Heather? <laughs> what we do is we sound uh, authoritative say it with me authoritative it's all about enunciating all of your syllables that makes you feel authoritative trust me on that anytime you feel like maybe you don't know what you're doing just speak more slowly and enunciate go for it and again, go back, maybe go back yeah. a couple steps, right? If you feel a little bit overwhelmed, go back. It's never too late to go back to basics. And there's this quote that goes around. I'm not going to cliche it or anything, but like advanced horse people know that the basics are where it's at. So the fact is you've got a green pony that you can teach some of the best foundation of fundamentals with. And you might get an already finished horse, but it's not going to be finished your way. And it might not be the best fit. Yeah, you, you know, way. for me, when I started Ben, Ben was the first horse I ever started with no um, clear cut, like competitive goals in mind. He was just a horse who needed ridden and I needed a horse to ride. And uh, the, the first few years of riding him, I don't know about now because I don't really ride him anymore. But the first few years of riding him were easily the best experience I've ever had bringing a horse along because I went so slowly like I don't think I cantered him for six months I really don't um because he just I wanted him perfectly balanced the walk and the trot and I enjoyed doing it and I said what's the hurry where are we going so quickly that we have to canter I don't have anywhere to be <laughs> No, and you have to finesse it at the low at the walk mm -hmm. anyway. Because if you can't, I if you can't walk and do it at the walk, then you shouldn't be doing it at a faster yeah. gate. Yeah, and anyway. even right down to like your halts. Like he was being used in a riding lesson, and this girl says to me, "How come he always takes an extra step after I halt him?" I said, "He's squaring up." She's like, "What?" I said, "I taught him to always stop on all four legs square, so after you haul him back to a halt with your hands." He's adjusting himself to stand up straight. She's like, oh, my God, you can teach a horse that? I'm like, yeah, you just go slow. <laughs> well, and that's it. And again, not to bring it back to my life, but that's kind of what I'm doing with Delight, right? I'm taking him back to basics and I'm pretending like he's never mm -hmm. been ridden before and I'm going so slow. And you know what? He didn't know a right. lot of things. He didn't know how to soften to the bit. He didn't know how to back up softly. He didn't know so many things. And uh, now he's got an emergency brake. I can ride him on the buckle and he's perfectly balanced. Like all these things, which right. he never had before. So give yourself Absolutely. some credit, girl. All right. Kimberly says saddle pads. I love them. But washing them is an issue. I have to find the time when my husband isn't home. Edison isn't trying to ring me on electricity charges, and there is having to clean the machine. Answer, buy more. <laughs> oh, my God. The answer, actually, the answer here is really easy, and that's to buy saddle towels and put them underneath your saddle pad. Have you have you ever done that? Uh, no, because I'm a saddle fit evaluator, and the more pads and things you have, uh, the more things slide Oh, and boo, slip. boo, 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 boo. You know, a saddle towel is just like, it's like a... Uh... It's just a piece of linen. It's like a tablecloth. Okay. I got some real talk for and you And I would now. just like to ready? point out that I don't a do this, pad? but I have done it in the past. Thank you. <laughs> no, that's okay. A saddle pad's only job is to protect your saddle against yes. horse hair and sweat. Yes. So why would you protect Listen, the saddle pad I don't buy the expensive against saddle horse hair and sweat? I'm trying to help out Kimberly. Uh, I only buy saddle pads on clearance. I never spend more than $15. <laughs> well, I have a suggestion for this. So I'm really good at this. So saddle pads, because I have furry babies, right? I don't, clip, yeah. I don't clip, I don't blanket. So for my recommendation would be to take one of those little uh, slickies grooming tools or like even a, a monster lint roller and just get the excess hair off, 
shake it out, and then wash it. Or my favorite, hose it down outside, like put it over a fence post, hose it down. And that then is true. Wash and it. also, pressure washing them is really fun. I have a it green pressure washer, right? It's like, um, it's not, it plugs in. It's not loud and it doesn't use gas. And every so often I just go out and pressure wash everything and it's super fun. And you can do your saddle pads that way too. And it's fun to watch the hair like blow off of them. So. <laughs> that is fun. It's very exactly. satisfying. And it's like a little gun. Mm-hmm. It's like. Yeah. It makes you feel very powerful. Um, yeah. It does. Yeah. I'm up. I got right, Jill. Jill's is. Um, I'm confused. Jill, is your, your toxic trait is keeping your tack room clean and organized? So. Or not or doing not it. Or not doing it. If it is doing it, then that's very funny. Then there's some like OCD at play here where your tack room is too clean and too organized and you're frightening people. And I'm pro. That's hilarious. And if you're not doing it, um, <laughs> that's normal. <I'm> a- <laughs> we have a lot to clean and organize in our lives. <laughs> I I love, I will say that's one thing. I, I may not clean my bridles, but they're put away nicely and everything's Oh, I spot. used to, boy, oh boy, can I keep a tack room snazzy? Everything figurated and sweeping. I love sweeping. Like, I love sweeping. And so getting all the dust out of every little corner every single day, it was, like, huge for me. Oh. It, I find, I just find sweeping deeply satisfying. It is yeah. satisfying. It is. Um, okay. So Lucy says, keeping the tack room organized during the winter when temps are below 40 and during the summer when temps are over 75. So... Yeah, that's a long, it kind of similar, I guess, like, when it's colder or too hot, she kind of just, like, th- thro- throws things willingly Oh, yeah, around. I can relate to that. You just go inside and you're just like, I'm not going back out there. Forget it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I can see that. I can see that, Lucy. All right, <laughs> yeah, we forgive you, Lucy. Cool. There's, you know, the, nobody <laughs> is going to blame anybody for doing things when it's too hot or too cold. Although, 75, Lucy, are we okay? Are we talking Celsius 75? Like... Yeah, but she lives in the mountains, so it shouldn't oh, get really right, hot right. up there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Not everybody wants to live yeah, in Florida. You, do. you all want to live in Florida. You know it. Yeah. No. Dude, Raina. Would, Raina's, Raina's is good. It's like from my childhood. Her, She says, unloading tack from the trailer when you get home. I would leave it in the trailer until I need it, but I never remember. I left it in the trailer. I will go to the tack room and look for it there first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Been there. Been there, especially too when I was, uh, I used to ride at a lesson barn. Every time they had a horse show, I'd be like, where the <laughs> fuck is this 52-inch girth I need? And then it would be like, oh, it's probably still in the trailer. And I'd have to track yeah. all the way to the tra- find out which it's never trailer close. it was. No, and it would be like a pile of bridles and a pile of girths and I had to figure I out I had to deal with was. that actually the um, last place Ben was my friend was keeping tack in the, in her trailer but also some tack was in a shed and then she would have riding students out and shit would just be it would be back and forth between both and piled up and it's just like why <laughs> yeah I mean you know I may not be clean but I am neat <laughs> all right so moving on Anne Marie says, "Oh, it's your favorite topic. Sheath I cleaning. I love talking about penises. Obsessed with clean <laughs> tack. A dirty bit and bridle are not oh. going on my horse. So again, this is again, this is one of those things, right? Sheath cleaning is that she doesn't do it enough, or she does it like I think all she does it. Time. I think she does it too much. Um, Anne Marie, <laughs> I, she might do it too much because she's obsessed with clean stuff, and I." I got a I got a toxic trait here that I'm going to insert. Never had to clean my horse's no, sheets. No, I yeah, I'll I'll have it done with like while somebody else is doing something like a vet visit. Oh no, I mean I've literally never had to. They're impeccable. Oh. I have a secret trick. Oh, I think I've heard your secret trick. I think I heard you telling someone else you? your secret what? trick. Did we talk about it on we talked one about of the episodes? Clean, but I don't remember you actually saying what you did and then I feel like I heard you telling someone at a coin affair because that's what we talk about 
<laughs> That's highly possible. I was Is talking a, about horse penises. Yes. The <laughs> baby oil. Did you say something about baby oil? Yes. Yeah, so I use the liquid, the fractionated coconut oil okay. in a spray bottle. And periodically, I will go and I will spray it up into the sheath area. And then because it's naturally antibacterial, antifungal, and it has this beautiful way of like sloughing off dead cells. So when they drop, they clean I'm themselves. It's literally, I've never had to clean, I've had Ferris almost five years now, never had to clean a sheath. And it's beautiful. <laughs> my horse's penis is gorgeous. Guys. When they drop down, you're like, look at that penis. My God. Because I would. What an amazing penis. <laughs> if it was that clean. Ferris is uh is shy, but but cute. And Delight is just like, oh, she thinks I'm handsome. Here's my penis. So yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't be hard to clean. Um but yes, so I'd be curious, Anne Marie, if that was you do it too much or not enough. Um All right. We've got and a couple more left. We have oh so the cleaning really comes up a lot, huh? We all have some cleaning issues. Um Brienne agrees. I haven't cleaned my grooming equipment in a while Brianne none of us have uh <laughs> yeah I, I think you're in good company here. we might have to get a sponsor who is like a brush cleaning uh service <laughs> or something <laughs> yeah. apparently we all we need, help, okay? need help or maybe somebody needs to come up with a miracle invention of like how to clean brushes and tack without actually having well, to clean brushes and tack. So yeah, I've actually just that. thought of something that would be fun and might make people do it because it's entertaining. So maybe I'll invent that. So, OK, maybe we'll do that. Yes. All right. L.A. says my complete antipathy towards barn politics. I don't want to engage with barn border gossip or hierarchy and the humans who bond over it. That's fair. I it's hard to do, though. Miss barn gossip a little bit oh no. I don't want to be the gossip but yeah I will hear the yeah gossip. I miss just sitting on a tack trunk petting some dogs and just listening to everything that's going on in the community um yeah mm -hmm. everybody knows everybody you definitely catch up it no absolutely bad not gossip. it could just Let's be like be did honest. you hear about did you hear about did you hear about and I want to hear about all of it mm -hmm. I really do my yeah. um my not toxic trait, my best trait is that I'm an incredible eavesdropper. I'm a quiet person who loves to listen. <laughs> Apparently you're listening to my baby oil conversation. I totally. I have one ear on you. One ear. My deaf ear. Your deaf ear. Uh, yeah. I really, I miss, I miss barn gossip. Uh, <laughs> so good for you, LA. You're yeah. better than me. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think, I mean, there's some barns that I just couldn't. I didn't want to stay at because it was right. really toxic barn gossip and it was really just unhealthy, really dramatic. And um, but I think, you know, showing up to the barn and, you know, having people like, oh, hey, did you hear so and so at the show or this horse? And, you know, I think sometimes it's really nice um, and it's a great way to kind of. Yeah, have and, a community. You know, the you politics know, part up. obviously is very bad. And I have been in Florida. I don't yes. know about everywhere, but in in Florida in particular, barn politics can be like it can be like real politics, like the insanity and divisive divisiveness, and the way people will stab each other in the back is like you would think things much more serious than messing around with horses were going on. And I've literally I've gone into feed stores. And heard people repeating complete, complete fabrications about my horses. Yeah. I had a woman <gasps> Ooh, that I worked yeah. for who um, went out of her way to tell everyone she could that a horse I had for sale was extremely dangerous and like attacked people <laughs> at her farm. <laughs> and it was all completely fabricated. And I actually ended up, I sold him to like a 16 year old eventually and she loved him and had him through college. It was so bizarre. Um, and to walk into the feed wow. store and hear the, somebody like talking about it going, wait, that's my horse. Who, who would say that about? Oh, I would be so I mad. Just kind of, was in shock like how is this happening oh. um so florida uh that would light me up yeah so if fast. it were now i mean i think i was i honestly i think i was 19 um so i wasn't exactly i wasn't a fiery 19 um 
I wasn't going out and throwing punches. Now I might. <laughs> well, you know, I can take a <laughs> yeah, punch. We, so. <laughs> we make it all start Incredible. shit and you can finish it. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I were a good team. Um, well, there's there's couple just a couple more, more I want to get to because we have to call it. Yeah. So Jennifer, Sue, and Alyssa. And I think those are the, the last few. And Lucy has one more, um, which is postponing riding because I'm busy she, or don't feel like it. But I feel so much better when I ride. Yeah. That's true of a lot of things, right? Yeah. Good point. Yeah. That's a good point. And I think a lot and of then, us are guilty of that. Yeah. Um, and Jennifer also has the keeping my stuff clean and organized. I'm not great at organizing to begin with, so I really struggle with my stuff just ending up thrown in my trunk. I'm really slack about keeping it clean, too. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. Sue's is, Sue's is good and intense. Caring about my horses more than just about anything. Yeah. That yeah. can, uh, that can, Guilty. um, sort of show up in lots of different ways, you know, or if you are even um you know like delaying care for yourself but because your horses need something exactly (laughs) so it that can actually it sounds great on the surface but it can be it can be damaging I I think we're all guilty of it yeah I can't tell you how many times people will tell me oh well my horse has the chiropractor the saddle fit evaluator the massage therapist and I don't take care of myself and to that I say like you got to because you're half of the equation mm-hmm. when it comes to your horse. And part of it is your horse might need that stuff because right. of you. Yes. So maybe both of you get adjusted or have a little bit of a massage right. and enjoy that together. Um, well, so Alyssa actually added this uh, today. And so I'm glad she made it under the wire because this one made me feel a little called out. Um Hyper focusing on random details and wanting what? to try everything. No. So what? Uh, it doesn't sound like me no. at all. <laughs> Alyssa, I could totally relate. Alyssa is oh, kind wow. of the ADHD um, queen. She knows a lot about it. And um she can she can, actually can be really helpful to me sometimes in in dealing with some of my like focus issues, just like you have as well. Um she's uh she's pretty knowledgeable about it. About like her self-awareness of what she does is really impressive. <laughs> yeah, I think um, that's like my biggest problem. I actually was talking to someone today because I'm thinking about hiring someone to um, assist me in some things. And I was basically like, here's all my mania. I have all these ideas and I need someone to help me like focus on the small things while I focus on the big picture and then to help direct me to the small things mm-hmm. when I need to. And I basically just need like a personal manager. It's, I don't even need an assistant. I want someone oh, yeah. to boss me around. Um, you know, like <laughs> tell me to be here and I'll do it. Thank you. Um, because, yeah, I, I have so many things I want to do and so many ideas, as you know, and it's really hard because I can barely handle the things. Yeah. And here we are, the three of us, Alyssa included, we're all self-employed. Right, like we're all running our own businesses, and That's yeah, it really telling. is. Like we feel like we want to be told what to do, but we also won't accept it. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Even even with the body work stuff, like I've partnered with a, a veterinarian and I work out of her office a couple of days a week. Will not be an employee. I'm an independent <laughs> yes, contractor. Yes, agreed. Thank you. <laughs> I've told people, I've been like, this contract makes it sound like I'm your employee and I'm not willing to sign that. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I think we all need to be very self-aware. But I think the nice thing is when we posted this topic in the clubhouse, right, so many of us have – well, there's a lot of things we have in common. But we all have toxic traits. The good news mm-hmm. is we're all aware of them. Most of these are pretty minor um, in the scheme of things. And I think that uh, – we're not alone. So we could all come together and the fact that we're all a little bit toxic. <laughs> no. But not in a bad way. Not in a bad way. We're good. Yeah. I think, you know, as long as we're aware of the things we do, my horses aren't the worse off for it just because I haven't cleaned a bridle recently and it's a little dry. If I break a rein, yeah. I break a rein, you know, and luckily my horses are pretty good with that. But... uh 
I wouldn't <laughs> ride them otherwise because I'm not that kind yeah, of rider. I mean, your tack trunk's but, not uh, organized well. Um, you probably know where stuff is. And if you don't know where stuff yeah. is, then you'll figure out a way to to put it in a, you know its own container or something like that. You take care of you. Yeah, and if anybody knows and finds a Benefab <laughs> blanket that's 78 <laughs> inches, call me because they might be mine. <laughs> your blanket is on a world tour. <laughs> Check your tack trucks. <laughs> Thank you for being a little weird with us, Horse Girl. If you like what you hear, make sure to subscribe to our podcast on your player of choice. Follow us on Instagram at Adulting with Horses Podcast, or even better, join our Adulting with Horses Clubhouse on Facebook, where you can become part of the show. Also, it's a great place to meet other horse crazy women.